Amen. Amen. going to um, open in prayer and begin today's power pack lesson. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to Sunday school on this glorious Mother's Day. I am Dr. Holly Kelly and join us if you will. Father, we come before you saying thank you. First of all, as we here in the U.S. at least celebrate Mother's Day, we bless you for being a God who forethought the need for us to have mothers, the love, the compassion, the, the, the strength, the perseverance, the integrity that comes with motherhood. You pre-planned and forethought all of that and poured into women those characteristics that are needed so desperately by all those who walk on earth. And so we bless you for that, God. For those of us who have mothers still living, thank you. For those of us who, whose mothers have already gone on, thank you for the memories that we can hold on to. Thank you, God, for those who serve as mothers and godmothers and aunties and, and big mamas. We bless you for that, Father. Thank you. And Lord, we ask that you would teach us, speak to our hearts, speak to us individually, God, as we, as we roam through Isaiah. It's like reading the paper, the newspaper, watching the, watching the media, even today, what he is talking about. So we, we ask God that you would individually pull a mirror before us. Allow us to clear off the mirror that we would clearly see, that we would distinctly hear what you are speaking to us. We bless you, God, for being a God of hope and a God of accountability. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Speak, Lord. <laughs> 
Amen. Good morning, good morning again, again, to all those who are not only on uh, joining us live on Facebook and the platform Zoom, but also on the phone conference line. We trust that you can hear and see all well. Let us get started. For those of you who are um, have your Bibles at the ready, we are coming from the book of Isaiah, Mr. Eagle-Eyed Prophet himself. Isaiah chapter 29, we're going to be reading verses 13 through 24, and we will start that now, read from the uh, King James Version, and then we will venture into other areas afterwards. Isaiah 29, 13 through 24 reads, wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouths, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Verse 14, therefore behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among his people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord and their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us? And who, know, who knoweth us? Isaiah 29, 16 reads, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it? He made me not. Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it? He has no understanding. 2917, is it not yet a very little while and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest? And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of this book and the, word, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness? 29, Isaiah 29, 19, the meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. Verses 21 through 24 of Isaiah 29 read, that make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. But when he seeth his children, the work of mine hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and shall fear the God of Israel. Isaiah 29 verse 24 reads, and also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. Okay, we are talking the offering hope or offering hope for the future. That's what Isaiah is doing, offering hope for the future. Isaiah, for those who may not be familiar, I said earlier, the eagle-eyed prophet, and, and that is what he is known as, known for because of his gifting from God to be able to see so far into the future. And, and understanding and, and studying, watching leadership because it matters. When leadership is done well, the trajectory of a life can change, literally. When leadership is not done well, the trajectory of a life can change, literally. 
Um, and, and so it's important for those of us who carry a title, who have a parking spot, who have a nameplate on the door, take leadership seriously. For those with no parking spot, with no title, with no name, no placard on the door, you are yet a leader if nothing but for yourself. Self-leadership has to be one of the hardest times and ways um, and people to lead. Getting this one straight right here, getting this one straight right here, that's difficult. And, and so it is, I said all that to say, this lesson is applicable to us all. It is applicable to us all. Isaiah's lifestyle reminds us that you cannot separate your words from your deeds. You can't separate your walk from your words. A leader has to be a leader by example first because people are absolutely going to do what they see being done. That hearing stuff, okay, because we can talk a good game, that comes secondary to what we are living out, what we are walking out. And so when we speak about um, integrity, it, it denotes oneness, oneness, no conflict, no contradiction between what we're walking out, what we're speaking out, what we're living out. It means there's a consistent message with what comes from my lips and what my lifestyle is. I often say this about my husband, who is a, um, a personal trainer and, and fitness and nutrition, when, when he's bringing in a new client, I, I tell them personally, I say, you don't ever have to worry about catching my husband at McDonald's or sneaking a, um, you know, a, a Dairy Queen ice cream fondue. That's not, that's not going to happen because there's a oneness between what he lives and what he talks. And so we have to we have to listen to what God is speaking to us today. And, and so Isaiah has convictions about those of us who teach the word, who, who live the word, and, and about how to avoid ungodly compromise. So that's where we're going to go today. We are in Isaiah 29, but I would really, really love it if you could commit something to me. For those on in every platform where you can hear or see me, I am seeking a commitment that for the next, you know, 35, 40, 45 minutes that we are together, I'm asking that you will commit to holding a mirror to your life. I mean, literally, pick up your mirror, pick up your cell phone and turn the camera on, flip it so that you are looking at yourself. Thank you. Thank you for the commitment. I need us to, we need us. The church needs us. The, our family, our marriage, our community, this nation needs just for the next 45 minutes to commit to holding the mirror to ourselves, to our lives. When we hold the mirror to our lives, that doesn't give us the opportunity to say, mm -hmm, but did you see what sister so-and-so did? And did you hear what pastor said? Okay, that, that cuts out all of those options. They are no longer an option. We will have to find ourselves in this lesson today on this beautiful Mother's Day, okay? We'll have to find ourselves. And so I trust that the Holy Spirit will use me and do his job. His job, I'm telling you, he is going to slice and dice this word and send it directly to your email, directly to your address. I mean, better than an Amazon tracking package. He's about to send that straight to you, okay? And you're the only somebody that can sign for the package. That's where we're going today. Let's keep the mirror on ourselves. As we start out in verse 13 of, of Isaiah 29, 
he's just jumping straight in. He is, he's jumping straight in. He says, the Lord says, I'm, 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 I'll be translating, I'll be coming from different versions um, of the word of God. This is from the NIV. These, the Lord says, let me, let me start from the very beginning beginning of that verse because it's different from when if holly says something as opposed to when mama says something as opposed to when the lord says something when you were little if you had more than one sibling and you want to make sure it got done all you got to do is put that tag on it mama said and then everything everything changes I could have been talking, I'm the middle of five. I got two older brothers, two younger sisters. I could have been talking for 30 minutes, talking about we need to get this done and we need to do that. And we need, let me say, mama said it, but that whole scenario is about to change. I, I know, you know what I'm talking about. Electronically, if you can put your hand up, raise your hand electronically, give me the high five. Let me know what you're talking about. I, I, you can relate. Okay, so that's why I wanna, I didn't wanna jump in at the middle of the verse he is setting the stage for us right now he said the lord says so already again th this is the lord talking directly to you because i'm holding the mirror up the lord is saying to us individually to gail to paul to robin to tip to otis fill in the blank with your name okay these people come near to to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. God is speaking to us. And the only one, only he who knows the heart and can't be fooled by pretense can make this charge. Now, thank you, Sister Lauer. Listen, I have been married for 33 years and I know that brother pretty well, but I cannot see in his heart. So I, I said that, I'm using that as an analogy. Even those you think you know very well, I don't care if they came from your womb. I don't care if you've been supporting them every day for the last 35 years. If you know them, there is a certain level, there is a certain divide that we can no longer cross. But when our creator, the Lord God himself, the omnipotent, omniscient God himself says, these people are coming to me. They're saying the right words. They can show enough saying. They can pray up a storm. They can, they can appear to worship me but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is based on human rules, things that they've been taught. They've been in church all their lives, so they know, they know how to... You raised your hand. You didn't leave. You had a chance to leave the room if you weren't going to commit. So, so he says, the one who knows our heart, the one who cannot be fooled by our pretense. We're starting out heavy. The, the lesson had something about hope, hope for the future. Well, listen, we, we, we got to go through some stuff before we can jump to the, to the hope. And so he's got to settle us. He's got to get us straight. He's got to rec he's got to help us recognize that he knows where we are. Find yourself in here. He knows where we are. He sees our heart. He God, if he were to say, "Hey baby, how you doing today?" This is not the time to say, "Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored." "Oh, I'm good. I'm just I'm doing what when our heart tells a different story, this is not the time. He's not the one to give that, that patent answer that we have learned to perfect. And without the smile, 
I put my hair in Bantu knots last night because I said, oh, I want to look halfway cute today. Thank God for reconnection. <laughs> I was booted for a minute. Let me say this. For those of you on Zoom, I am going to stop my video and try to reserve my bandwidth, but you'll still hear me. Hopefully this will not kick me out again. So listen up. So, so here's where we're going. So, so when he says, when, when God is the only one who knows our motive and our heart, he understands beyond that smile exactly where our hearts are. He, he recognizes where our hearts are. And he said, these people are, are, are far from me. They got the right things coming out of their mouths. They, they're honoring me, but their hearts are far from me. They're coming into a place of worship, but it's not the worship. We are having some difficult right now. Uh, we will be back shortly. What are you getting ready to sign out? No, uh, just hold on for one minute. Let us just pray. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for this opportunity. And now, Father God, we ask that you bless us, this line, the difficulty that we are having, Father God, there in uh, the city of Menifee, Father God. Bless us, help us, and guide us all, Father God. Now, bring this program back online, Father God, that we may continue to hear your word and give you glory, give you honor. In Jesus' name we say, amen.
something that's not on our script yet. So, <laughs> if I don't know if y'all kept going or not, but you know, it's called technology and you do what you got to do. So, let me pick up where I left off. And uh, my producer extraordinaire, Greenwood, if you can, okay, so. We're just going to pick it up. I don't know if y'all kept going or not, but here, here's where I'm going. And now it'll be a somewhat condensed lesson, but th the word is, the word remains true. And so as, as, as Isaiah starts us out at the very beginning, asking us, or not even telling, not even asking us, he's telling us what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying, look, y'all, y'all are faking it and fronting. You, you, your heart is not here. And so the one thing that we cannot do, we, the one thing we cannot ever afford to do, you can fool a whole lot of a whole lot of people. We never need to fool God because we can't. It's, it's an impossibility. The traditions of, of like I was saying earlier that um, it, it is a matter of recognizing the truth and sometimes we have we've been in a habit so long a habit church can become a habit singing and praising and worshiping him can become a habit and we will move from the purity of worship the purity of acknowledging and praising and 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 trusting God coming to him there's there's a sincerity and a purity involved until we allow habit to take over and at that point um the integrity is gone that oneness that I spoke about at the very beginning the oneness that um, there's no contradiction between our lifestyle and our our word what we're living, what we're talking about, do not contradict each other. We have to be intentional about living on purpose, living in absolute sincerity. The traditions, the tra oh, this is a note that I wrote earlier when I was, I, I was studying that, that they were like, and because we committed to holding the mirror up to ourselves, Okay, so find yourself in here, but they were like uh, lip syncers. You know, they had all the right words. They got the right intonations. They can, <laughs> and nothing's coming out of their mouth. They, they had all the, the right styling and, and the, the face contortions and they knew when to put their hands up. And, but a lip syncer is a fake. It looks good. I mean, you can fool a lot of people for a long time while you're lip syncing, if you're good enough. And sometimes we get so good at lip syncing to God. We come in, we know the songs, we know the prayers. Depending on where you grew up, it's the same prayer literally every time. And you know them so you can become like a lip sinker and, and, and be living a lie. It, it, there's no passion, there's no sincerity, there's no integrity, find yourself in here. The traditions, 
the traditions of, of, of man and society meant more than God's word. And I'm not trying to leave it back in, in Isaiah's day. Find yourself, May of 2021, that his word, his precepts come second to our culture, our traditions, the latest trends, what is happening on, on social media. If it's a, did it go viral? So it had to be a lot going on. So, um, So find yourself there. What, what are we? What are we doing? What are we doing that that society has come closer and means more? Take a, takes a higher precedent to to God's word, to God's standard. Because anytime we can quote what someone on social media says more, we can quote the CNN statistics more. We can, we, we, we know the latest trends more than we know God's standards. We, we sometimes live at a point where what we're doing in the church is our own thing, but we just choose to slap a, well, I prayed about it and the Lord told me and, oh, the Lord spoke to me and gave this to me and we slap a in Jesus name over it. And that's supposed to make it pure and sincere as if it were integral with God. He starts out, this don't sound like a lot of hope. Dr. Kelly, you said the lesson was talking about some hope, hope for the future. I, only, I ain't hear no hope. We're going to get to the hope. But like Isaiah, we got to deal with what is the current reality. What is, what, what are, what are, what is going on right now in reality? before we get to the hope. That's an issue for us today. So often we try to jump to the, to the, who oh, that makes me feel better, thank you. Who that's hope, I can, I'm just going, I'm, I'm looking ahead, I am getting there in the sweet by and by. We gotta deal with right now, right? This, with today's reality, before we can look to the sweet by and by, before we can look to, well, sooner or later it's going, who oh, it's gonna work itself out. Well, what are we doing right now to work it out? This reality right now, we got to work here. We got to live here. We got to operate here right now. And so, so let's, let's keep it moving. But as we're holding that, clean me up, God, clean me up. Uh, for those on the conference line, we're hearing some, getting some comments about clean me up. We need never get too far away from the psalmist prayer that says, search me, oh God, search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Because I promise you, this is why I'm saying, hold the mirror up, hold God's mirror up, hold that thing up to ourselves because Anyone doing the searching, less than God himself, allowing God to do it, I promise you, I don't even trust me. In my Bible, over that verse, I have written, God, you search me. Search me, oh God, search Holly, because Holly will excuse some stuff in a minute. Holly will judge off of my intentions and not the impact. What I meant, that ain't what I meant. What I meant was, and you know I'm, okay, those are my intentions. The impact fell differently, okay? But I will allow myself some leeway. I will, I will, I will leave a gap open and I will, I will find my way through that gap. So, so it's like, search me, oh God. And if God is telling me, mm -mm, uh -uh. you've been coming singing the songs yeah I saw you in choir rehearsal you was in choir rehearsal you didn't miss one I saw you at the bible studies you didn't miss one I saw you when you was teaching it but your heart is far from me if God is speaking that to us don't overlook that don't run right past that we, we're gonna play ourselves for the fool in a minute here 
So he moves on in verse 14. And, and, and where we were going is spiritual judgment for spiritual wickedness. Sometimes we, we lower God and make him put him on a, on a level with us, put him on man's level. And look, by man's level, I mean this. Sometimes I'll let you get away with stuff. I knew, I knew when you opened your mouth talking to me, you was lying to me. I knew that. I, I watched the lie trickle through your lips. I, I heard, I knew you were lying. Did I get a sledgehammer and beat you over the head because I was going to make you pay for that lie? No, some stuff I, I'll let you get away with. I, I'll, I'll watch you do what you're doing. We make God like that and we say, whew, whew, thank you, Jesus. And even this how good we get. We'll do dirt. No, it's dirt when we're doing it. And then when God doesn't smack us, we say, whew, thank you, Jesus. Now, how foolish is that? How far have how far have we deceived ourselves that because the judgment doesn't come straight, straight, as soon as that lie, we're not dropping dead as soon as the lie falls out of our mouth like Ananias and Sapphira, we don't drop dead. We sort of say, whew, thank you, Jesus, and got away with that one. There is a spiritual judgment for spiritual wickedness. And, and when we remove sincerity, from our hearts, when we allow ourselves to operate from a place of insincerity, God, with all his wisdom, with his omniscience, omniscience, all-knowing, he knows everything, he will do what needs to be done. He will remove intellect from the intellectuals. He will remove wisdom from the wise. He will do that when we continue to play the fool. And, and that's really what it is. They tried to play the hypocrite and fool God and they ended up getting played. And I'm gonna switch that pronoun right now because it's not a they. Let me back that thing up. When we try to play God for foolish, he already told us, oh, don't be deceived. Do, don't be deceived because what you reap, you're gonna sow. But what you sow, you want to reap. Don't be deceived. Don't do it. And yet we continue to do that. We try to play God by going to church, putting on a, you know, but he, he can't be mocked. He's not going to be mocked. You're not going to fool him. God will hide those things from us when we are determined to act as if he doesn't see, to act as if he doesn't know that we are living a double life. When we continue to do this, when we continue to try to play in the fool, judgments will come and those judgments involved, he will remove the intellect, he will remove the wisdom, he will remove the discernment from us. Okay, now I know, I know probably everybody on here is for real, for real saved, and their memory has been wiped clean of those R&B songs you used to dance to and know and sing and, and, and do some stuff to. Your memory is like, now you are like amnesiac. You're just an amnesiac to all those. But there used to be a song that said, everybody plays the fool sometimes. There are no exceptions to the rules. You better listen, baby. I ain't lying. Everybody plays the fool. The worst time we're going to play the fool is when we're trying to fool God. As if he didn't already see and know what we just did. There's a scripture that says, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. I'm so grateful that the, that the psalmist wrote it like that because sometimes we think, well, I ain't say it. I ain't say it, did I? But the, the meditation of your heart spoke it loud because the, your creator heard you when you thought it. It was evil, it was vile, it was manipulative. And sometimes the only reason we didn't say it falls right in line with the preachings as well because we didn't want them to think bad of us. So we, didn't, we cleaned it up and did a little nice nasty version of being ugly. 
of being rebellious, of being mean and cruel. And, and, and Isaiah is reminding us, look, there, th this deception is, we go into verse 15, that, that deep deception trying to hide from God, anything reveals more of our foolishness. When we try to hide from God, I mean, he says, woe to those who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord, who do their work in darkness and think, who sees us? <laughs> hey, I got away. Ain't nobody see that? You ain't know? Because I ain't let it come out of my mouth. I was just thinking, we, we got we to gotta make sure that we don't play the fool so hard, so long, so well, that we really believe we've tricked God. That the created being, this one right here, yes, we never get away. We never get away with it. Let me, okay, very quickly, I am going to, um, Go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel verse, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 8. Ezekiel chapter 8 and 12. I changed locations and my Bible is back there. Okay, Ezekiel 8 and 12 says, he said to me, son of man, have you seen what the elders of Israel are doing in the darkness, each at the shrine of his own idol? They say, the Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. Okay, so playing the fool, trying to slip and dip and slide and glide away out of the sight of God has been going on a long time. From the foundation, from the beginning of the world, we've been trying to hide our, our dark deeds because we got enough sense to know that it ain't right. Even a baby, a baby comes out, a child, a two-year-old, well, did you have it? Did you eat that cookie? They got crumbs and chocolate all over their mouth and they got their hands hidden behind their back. No, I didn't eat that cookie. Nobody has to teach an 18-month-old that, a two-year-old that, okay? The older we get, we get better at hiding from each other. At, at, at cloaking over our misdeeds, but our heart, the heart that God planted within us knows that it's wrong, which is why we try to hide it. But that's, that's just, I mean, they go, to, they go to great lengths. They go to great lengths trying to hide the deeds. It's not a they, it's an us. Please, dear God, don't allow us, don't allow ourselves to say, oh, yeah, that was me. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, when I didn't know the Lord well, uh, I did that stuff when I was a young saint. When we do that and we take ourselves out of the running for misdeeds, when we remove ourselves from the possibility of believing that we still sin and still slip and still hide and still cloak, we're going down faster. So that again, please, please find yourself in here. What are you hiding from the all-knowing, omniscient God? Every time we try to hide and cloak stuff, that's practical everyday disbelief in the omniscient God. It's very practical. It doesn't look like idolatry. It doesn't look like rebellion. It doesn't look like you need to turn your collar in. But it's practical everyday disbelief in the omniscient God, the one who knows everything about you. I have, I have someone, especially my young Marines, they always used to say, oh man, we don't want you to hear this part. We don't want, they're cussing us and we know you don't want to hear that. Well, why, why is that okay for you? It's like, it's like you don't want me to watch and see what you're listening to, but there's a God who's always watching and seeing and listening to what we're watching and listening to. So we gotta, we gotta do the work. 
We, we have got to do the work. As we wind this down, look for yourself in here. He, he takes verses 17 through 21. He takes that whole clump. And, and the eagle eye prophet himself now projects to the future. He is projecting us to the future and, and, and speaking about God's kingdom. Be, because from God's point of reference, it is just a little while. It's just a little while. The, the prayer that we memorize from, from childhood, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. We have a role to play in that, leaders. We, we, we have something to do with that. It's not in the sweet by and by alone where his justice, his social justice, the eels. Did you read? Did you read what he's saying in those verses? The ruthless will vanish. The mockers will disappear. And all who have an eye for eye will be cut down. Those who with a word make someone out to be guilty, who ensnare the defender in court, and with false, false testimony deprive the innocent of justice. This is still the same, the same man of God who is talking to us about getting ourselves straight about stop faking and fronting and trying to put up a facade for God, trying to, trying to play the fool and hide from God and we make ourselves into the old fool. He is projecting to the day, the forward day, this day right here, God's kingdom will, the, the deaf will hear and no, things won't, you'll be able to understand, the blind will see. There will be justice. There will be, no more of this stuff that we're living out every day where you can lie, put your hand on the Bible and say, so help me God. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Tag a in Jesus name on it and then proceed to tell lies that ruin lives. So Isaiah was talking about that here. This is, we are now to promote we're now in 2021 to promote God's provision and God's equality, even now, while we seek for his kingdom to come, while we seek for his kingdom agenda to be, to, to be enacted. It's not only for the sweet by and by in the, in the millennial reign where all is right. We have a responsibility, the accountability. We have the the, the weight to bear the truth right now for all of us. If we, if God has given us the, the platform for equality and justice, that's on us. Sister Greenwood, jump in here, come off mute. What, what, are, what are you adding to, to us? Yes, I wanted to tell you um, on Facebook from Demetria Greenwood, it says, worry about people we're worrying about people when we should be worried about God. Mm. He sees and knows everything. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Because too often I'll try to, I'll try to make sure I'm looking good for you. I'll try to make sure I'm coming, you know, holding up my reputation for you. All the while God is saying, Hey baby, baby, daughter, son, can, 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 you, can you spend a little time with me and, and, and let's get our relationship straight again? Because you're putting up a facade and you'll run back in the church. You ain't spent no time with me all week. And yet you'll run up in the church and jump on a microphone and pray the, hell, pray the house down. You will, sing the, you will sing people under the pews and you ain't spent no time with me. Okay, you, you, you have the position and yet you do not stand for those. You will not put yourself in a place of discomfort for those who can't help themselves. The lowly, the meek, the needy, they need us. Not in the sweet by and by, hallelujah. Those of us right now, you're an educator, you're in the classroom and you see a baby is, is being mistreated and you don't, come on educators, God forbid you a politician. Last night, last night Sunday school, he said politician. 
Okay, like politics, politics, they tricking us. Okay, that, that allows us to say, mm -hmm, what they doing? I'm gonna turn that mirror back to you and ask, where do we fit in? There is hope for the future. Once we deal with today, all we have to do is turn. All we have to do is cut out. Listen, listen, we fit in, we fit in right here. Individually, we need to turn and make sure our relationship with God himself is straight. If I am straight with God, not perfect, if I'm straight with him, if I seek him out, if I come and I cry and I say, God, I don't know what to do, but I trust you because your word says that you would direct me, that it, get straight with him, then we'll be less burdened to keep living a lie so that there's a contradiction between what we talk about and what we live. The hope comes into play. And so, so my question for us to individually ask and mandate an answer from us, don't you let yourself off the hook. Don't let yourself off the hook with not answering. The question is, where does God want you to stop pretending and playing yourself for the fool? What areas of your life does he want you to stop pretending and playing the fool and trying to psych him out while we psych all the other people? Where in our life do we need to get that clean? Where do we need to get that straight? Then the hope shines bright. The hope is ready and waiting for all of us. I will say this. None of this is possible without a relationship with God. And God himself said, you want a relationship with me? You need to come through my son. Okay, you need to come through my son. If you want a relationship with me, a lot of people are, are, are believing and thinking, well, you know, I can, I can do my own thing. I can do it the way I, you know, God knows my heart. He certainly does. And it was that same heart that he said, come through my son, come through my son. And so I just want to take a few moments and invite you. I don't care how long you've been in the church and doing, doing the traditions and doing the trends and following the customs and, and following the habits. We have to have a personal relationship. Thank you in the chat. We have to have a personal relationship with God. And I don't care who made it sound like it was so difficult and so deep and you had to get yourself straight before you, who I'm gonna clean myself up, then I'm coming to church. Okay, if you could have done that, you would have done that already. You wouldn't have ruined 10 years of your life and your babies, okay? And, and put such grief on your mother as she sees you ruin your, if you could have done it, you would have. So let's, again, Let's not play ourselves for the fool. A, B, C, except that we have blown it, except that we've been playing the fool, we've been talking a good game, we've been fronting, we've been putting up a facade, but we really, really know that we have blown this, we cannot do it without him, except that, except that he's the only somebody, Jesus Christ is the only somebody who can clean it up and make it right. Believe that he died on the cross for you individually, not just for the good saints, not just for the folk who got a little money, not just for those who got degrees. He died for you. He rose for you. He is sitting at the right hand of his father right now, interceding. He's praying for you individually. And then confess that thing with your mouth. Believe it in your heart and confess it. ABC, the relationship has just begun. It has just begun. And like any relationship, you got to spend time with each other. You got to get to know each other. You got to talk to each other a lot to grow the relationship. You don't need to say, oh, you're my best friend and you just met last night. You got to take time and get to know each other. He's talking to you through his word, through, through those unctions that you feel in your heart. He's speaking to you and you can talk to him. So, so we don't have to continue to fake in front. So that what he said, the Lord said, these people draw nigh to me. They, they come close to me with their lips and they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That don't have to be us anymore. 
We don't have to fake it anymore. On this Mother's Day, on this beautiful Mother's Day, we can, we can put a beautiful bow on that and get in relationship with the Lord. I don't want to make it sound like zip, bam, boom, abracadabra, your whole life is going to turn overnight. But now you have a hope for your future. Now you have a hope that you don't have to do this thing on your own. Now that you have a hope that you don't have to figure it out all on your own, that you don't have to struggle all on your own because you got a God who has promised that he would never leave you. He would never, ever forsake you. Now he is in relationship with you. He's been beckoning you this far. So welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. I see, um, let me put somebody on spot. We got like four minutes left. We're going to split this up. Um, yes, thank you for all who are joining us. Thank you for all who jumped in. Uh, we will meet next week, same bat channel, same bat time to jump in here and get more of God's word. Uh, Sister Lowry, I'm going to put, if you can find your mute button, come off of mute and, and give us a nugget of what God has spoken to you this morning. Find that mute and come off mute. Let us hear from you. No, that wasn't planned. Folks know me. They know I do that. If you can't find that mute button, put it in the chat. In the meantime, Brother Sister Haskell, what has the Lord spoken to you? Find your unmute button. Amen. Good morning. Uh, the Lord has spoken to me that I need to look at myself. I need to take a, a closer look at my own life and, and see if it's lining up with what God would have me to do and say. Amen. 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 I, I only second and third and fourth that to the nth degree. Um, and, and thank you for jumping in here. Thank you for, for joining us. For, for our phone conference line, he has just said, we're going to continue to look and, and search, search for ourselves. My prayer, my plea for all of us on this beautiful Mother's Day is search me, oh God. That becomes our prayer. Search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see, see anything that doesn't line up. See everything that doesn't line up. Clean me up and clean me out. Thank you um, for joining us. Next, I will give you the title and lesson so you can get a head start. Next week's lesson, Jeremiah, the suffering preacher, is coming from Jeremiah 38. You can read the whole chapter, but 38, 14 through 23. To every woman out there, um, it is my prayer that you have a phenomenally glorious, uh, wonderful Mother's Day. Mother's Happy Mother's Day to all. Um, and thank you again for joining us. Stay, thank you again for joining all of us on the phone conference line. Uh, we will meet you here every Sunday, 8 a.m. Imani, Church of God in Christ. Thank you again. Blessings to you galore. Thank you.